How could it be that humans suddenly possessed advanced knowledge? It's Egypt's ancient secret and Randall Carlson's discovery solves the mystery of the pyramids. It is possible that long before modern humans, other advanced civilizations existed that possessed knowledge that later flowed into the cultures of the Egyptians and also to communities such as the builders of Stonehenge. But who were these beings and were they human or completely different from us? If we believe conventional historiography, advanced human civilizations appeared sometime around 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Indus Valley, and China. These civilizations immediately possessed an astonishingly high level of knowledge and technology. In Mesopotamia, cities appeared as if from nowhere. The Egyptians practiced a culture and architecture that is still remarkable today, especially when we consider that previously there were only simple nomads and cattle herders in these regions. Similarly remarkable is the cultural flourishing in the Indus Valley around 2600 BC and in China. Even before these cultures, there were groups of people who built impressive megalithic structures. Most of them probably have an astonishingly complex astronomical background, such as Stonehenge in England or the world's oldest known celestial observatory at Gossack. Randall Carlson is one of the researchers who are certain that these structures and cultural blossoms did not just appear out of nowhere. There must have been highly developed civilizations that disappeared for various reasons. Carlson sees a wave of radical change on the Earth's surface in the epoch before and during the last ice age, which ended around 11,700 years ago. This was followed by the emergence of megalithic cultures, which are said to have been primitive on the one hand, but were also capable of transporting and erecting huge stones that would push even our heavy-duty cranes to their limits today. Who is Randall Carlson? Randall Carlson is first and foremost an architect, builder, geometrician, and also a scholar and independent researcher who is largely self-taught. Carlson is known for his alternative theories and work on the end of the last ice age, the influence of ancient floods, and climate change. He is passionate about the symbols of ancient mythology and sacred geometry, which he links directly to world events. His research and theories often deal with the interplay between environmental disasters and the possible influences of such events on the development and disappearance of ancient civilizations. Carlson specifically examines the patterns and evidence of major catastrophic events in Earth's history and attempts to deduce that these civilizations subsequently disappeared or were scattered across the globe. With these survivors, higher knowledge and cultural imprints then reached corners of the world where people were at the transition from rural nomadic life to a civilized culture. This could explain why people such as the Egyptians, the builders of Gobekli Tepe, and even Mesopotamian advanced civilizations suddenly possessed extended knowledge of architecture, astronomy, agriculture, and urban planning. Through his work, Carlson attempts to build bridges between archaic knowledge and modern science by presenting evidence and theories that counter the often conservative and narrow conventional scientific theories. In the U.S., Carlson became popular primarily through his long and intense conversations with podcaster Joe Rogan. Younger Triad Impacts Hypothesis Can you imagine if entire civilizations disappeared due to asteroid impacts? The idea seems plausible because as we know today, the dinosaurs also disappeared after an asteroid around 15 kilometers wide hit north of Mexico. Randall Carlson is convinced that advanced civilizations were influenced or even wiped out by such catastrophic events. He likes to refer to the Younger Triassic Impact Hypothesis, which proposes that one or more impacts of comets or asteroids before the end of the last ice age triggered drastic climate changes. These events ended the Ice Age and probably caused massive global flooding, climate shifts, and the collapse of entire civilizations. This is quite conceivable. It cannot be ruled out that huge impacts wiped out entire island continents such as Atlantis or changed the coastal regions of continents that still exist today. Experts like to argue that even in these cases, evidence of these cultures should still be visible somewhere today. 
Many geologists and archaeologists find it difficult to believe that these civilizations have completely disappeared. Carlson assumes that this lost knowledge has not completely disappeared. He sees myths, legends, and religious texts not just as stories, but as historical records. In particular, he sees a connection in worldwide flood stories that point to a global catastrophe. Many testimonies emerged as oral traditions and were later incorporated into religious texts and beliefs. The Bible knows the story of Noah and the flood, and today we know that the story existed almost exactly with the Sumerians, only the names and places were slightly different. Incidentally, the Sumerians also knew the story of the Garden of Eden, only here it was not Eve's fault that people were thrown out of the paradise. In this version of the story, people fell victim to the battle between God and heaven and a nasty adversary on earth. What is the background to the astronomical alignments? It's hard to believe, was Stonehenge really only there to catch the sunlight at the equinoxes? Or did the arrangement of the stones actually have a completely different background? To this day, researchers continue to find new aspects to the site, and it seems that we have only just begun to understand structures like Stonehenge. Randall Carlson has been meticulously investigating the astronomical alignments of megalithic structures for many years and is amazed at the precise astronomical knowledge that ancient civilizations possessed. Another remarkable example of this are the megalithic temples of Malta. The structures appear simple at first, but to the expert, the buildings reveal that the builders had specific astronomical knowledge and that the temples themselves represent astronomical phenomena. These temples are not only impressive architectural achievements, but also testify to a strange understanding of mankind. The connections between the movements of celestial bodies and aspects of earthly life cannot be coincidences. The people wanted to express something special, or the temples even served hitherto unknown purposes. Not so long ago, measurements of the pyramids of Giza in Egypt showed the exact correspondence between the three structures and the three stars in Orion's belt. This gave rise to the Orion Correlation Theory, which states that this alignment is far more than just a spiritual act. According to alternative theories, the pyramids were not tombs, but structures that could possibly capture and focus energies from space. We probably no longer perceive these types of energies today. There are many spiritual mediums and people with extraordinary perceptions who say that the Egyptians had a completely different perception of the world. The once gilded tips of the pyramids bundled subtle energies that we can no longer perceive today. The knowledge of these forces beyond the physics of Newton and Einstein is also said to have helped these people to erect unusual structures and transport amazingly heavy loads over long distances. In Stonehenge, Randall Carlson sees a site that served both earthly and cosmic purposes. The precise alignment of the stones to the sunrises and sunsets at the times of the reversal of light, or the equinoxes, does indeed point to a calendar. However, the site was certainly more than just a gigantic calendar or a beautiful place of worship. People would certainly not have undertaken the construction of Stonehenge, the transportation, and the astonishingly precise placement of huge stones if the site had not been in some kind of coherent relationship between effort and benefit. Furthermore, this site, like so many ancient structures, demonstrates such a deep understanding of geometry, astronomy, and engineering that it could not possibly have been built by people who were otherwise just simple nomads and farmers. If we look for a moment at Randall Carlson's ideas in the overview, the researcher imagines that advanced civilizations existed tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years ago. These species could have been early and highly developed types of humans, or they could have come to Earth from outer space. Natural disasters could have led to the widespread destruction of the cities and settlements of these people. Gigantic volcanic eruptions, fissures in the Earth, and worldwide tsunamis would indeed have had the power to make entire cities disappear. Far-reaching and later quite normal geological reshaping processes also caused the last traces of these people to disappear. And today, the evidence of these cultures may lie so deep in the earth or at the bottom of the oceans that we have not yet been able to track them down. Some members of this species may have survived again and again. They later encountered other hominids on this earth, simple cattle herders and nomads, 
taught them, and mingled with them. In this way, complex knowledge was passed on to simple humans. As a result of this encounter, the tribes developed rapidly and produced unusual flowers, such as the Egyptians or the Sumerians. There were similar developments in India, and there is also evidence from South America that complex, organized, advanced civilizations such as the Maya or Incas developed very quickly and suddenly from previously semi-wild and scattered nomads and farmers. Here's the evidence. There is now plenty of evidence worldwide to support theories put forward by researchers such as Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock. For a long time, the city of Thonis Herakleion was considered a pure myth. Then the former Egyptian Ptolemaic coastal city reappeared. It had presumably sunk into the Mediterranean after an earthquake and a break in the Egyptian coastline. All those years, Thonis Herakleion lay at the bottom of the Mediterranean, about 15 kilometers off the coast, covered by the Nile mud, but actually not that deep. A myth suddenly became reality and it turned out that all the old legends and reports about the city were true. The same applies to the recently discovered Golden City of the ruler of Amenhotep III in Egypt, which was also regarded by experts as pure fantasy and an exaggeration by historians. Today, the Golden City is the best preserved complete Egyptian site and shows, like no other relic, normal Egyptian life. Workshops and residential buildings have not been preserved so perfectly at any other site. In India, divers found the legendary city of Dwarka off the coast of Gujarat. Deep on the seabed lie temples, magnificent streets and buildings that tell of an extraordinary splendor and highly advanced culture. Incredibly, divers have recovered carved pieces of wood from the site that have been dated to be over 9,000 years old. Dwarka is also known as the Golden City of Lord Krishna, and apparently there was already a civilizational center here when people in Europe were still living in caves. Ashitsa was hated. It's hard to believe how archaeologists are trying to solve the mystery of the past. For a long time, Hatsuput was one of Egypt's few female pharaohs, was considered lost. Almost all the great rulers had long since been discovered and scientists were amazed at some tombs which no name could be assigned. One of these nameless mummies was missing a tooth, which was discovered in a wooden box in the Valley of the Kings. The tooth had been found with an insignia all pointing to Hatshiyup, and as this tooth fitted perfectly into one of the nameless mummies, the mystery was finally solved. Hatshisup's mummy was finally found and scientists were able to learn more about this unusual woman from the tomb. Hatshisup was apparently not only remarkable as a ruler, but also for her architectural achievements. Her magnificent mortuary temple in Deir al-Bahari was designed by Senumut, a masterpiece of ancient architecture. The temple is seamlessly embedded into the rocky cliffs and was probably a much visited place of worship shortly after the queen's death and a monumental representation of her power and divinity. During her reign, Hatshisup promoted trade and expeditions, strengthened the country's trade relations, and brought prosperity to her people. Strangely, the ruler had herself depicted as a male pharaoh with a false beard. It is unclear why the ruler opted for a male presence. Presumably, it was a move to consolidate her authority in a male-dominated world. There were many indications that the ruler was popular with the people. However, her stepson and successor, Thutmose III, seemed to downright hate Hatsupup. After her death, the new pharaoh tried to erase all memory of his stepmother, having images and inscriptions destroyed, which is precisely why the tomb was initially difficult to find. Thutmose III presumably could not find the same recognition after Hatshepsut's death and tried to destroy the memory of his predecessor through this outrage. What did Nefertiti really look like? Egypt produced few great women. However, those who came to power and influence in this country became legends that are still revered today. Another female figure that everyone knows today is Nefertiti, the wife of Akhenaten. She is one of the most enigmatic and beautiful queens of ancient Egypt and her bust is world famous. The artwork was discovered in 1912 by the archaeologist Ludwig Borchardt in the workshop of a sculptor in Amarna. Since the discovery, people have often wondered whether this woman was really so unusually beautiful 
or whether it was an artistic interpretation of her beauty. Nefertiti would certainly not be the only historical figure who may have cheated a little in her portraits, but experts are largely certain that this woman's beauty is genuine. Until this discovery, Nefertiti was virtually unknown. It was only after this discovery that researchers began to investigate the history of this impressive woman, and they were lucky. The woman's life could be reconstructed very well thanks to numerous temple inscriptions. Nefertiti was born around 1370 BC in Mitanni, today's Syria, as the daughter of a king and was originally called Tadushepa. She was brought to Egypt to marry the Egyptian pharaoh Amenhotep III, but after his death, she married his son and successor Amenhotep IV, who later changed his name to Akhenaten. Nefertiti means the beautiful one who comes, which again indicates that Nefertiti was in fact of unusual beauty. She probably attached great importance to her appearance, wore elaborate crowns and wigs, and probably had a shaved head in order to cope better with the pharaoh's heavy headgear in the hot climate and to prevent vermin problems. As queen of Egypt, she was elevated to the status of a goddess and was apparently very popular with the people. Things were a little different with her husband Akhenaten, as the ruler simply abolished the numerous Egyptian gods and replaced them with the sun god, Aten. He and Nefertiti probably wanted to secure an unusual position of power as the only mediators between Aten and the people. After Akhenaten's death, the reform was quickly reversed and the people were happy that they could once again pay homage to their favorite gods in their temples. Was Egypt an immigrant society? What is a temple of Zeus doing in Egypt? Scientists asked themselves this question when they found a temple dedicated to Zeus Kesios in Tel Afarma. The city, which used to be called Pelusium, is a real treasure trove for scientists. Apparently, cultures and religions merged in this place in a very unusual way. Zeus Kesios is a fusion of the Greek god Zeus and the Syrian Mount Kesios. Today, the temple consists of two toppled granite columns, followed by Corinthian capitals. This indicates that the site was later used as a Christian church. The Tel El Farmer, or Pelusium site, was once an important trading and cultural hub, and the discovery of the unusual temple shows how different cultures and religions converged at these sites and presumably coexisted peacefully. The Egyptians themselves knew a rich world of gods, and instead of rejecting foreign gods, they adopted, modified, or adapted some of them. Pelusium seems to have been a true melting pot of cultures and shows us that multiculturalism has always existed. Statue moved by magic. It sounds too crazy to be true. A mysterious phenomenon occurred at the Manchester Museum in England that attracted worldwide attention. A 10 inch tall statue of an Egyptian man named Neb Sanu began to slowly rotate counterclockwise. This statue has been in the museum for 80 years and nobody knows what suddenly happened. It originally came from a mummy tomb dating back to 1080 BC. The strange turning behavior was documented by a time-lapse video. It showed that the statue took more than seven days to complete a full 360 degree rotation. British physicists suspected that the rotation was caused by different friction between the base of the statue and the glass on which it stands. However, the phenomenon remained mysterious as the statue had been standing in this place for a long time and had not previously shown any movement. Para-researchers came up with the idea that Neb Sanu statue might have unexplored physical properties. It may have been a magical artifact that has now been reactivated thousands of years later, standing in a museum. Has Cleopatra's coffin been found? With Cleopatra, we have the third superwoman that Egypt has produced, although, like Nefertiti, she was not actually a real Egyptian at all. Cleopatra's family came from Macedonia. The burial place of this legendary ruler has long been sought, so far in vain. But researchers may have made a small breakthrough. Almost 100 forgotten coffins from the Ptolemaic era have been found in southern Cairo. The Ptolemies, who included Cleopatra, ruled Egypt as successors to Alexander the Great from around 320 BC to 30 BC. To date, not a single tomb of this ruling family has been found, and these coffins could provide clues for the first time as to how people were buried at this time. 
A well-preserved mummy wrapped in cloth was found in one of the coffins, which shows that mummification was probably still the usual burial method for the Ptolemies at this time. X-ray examinations carried out on the mummy revealed that this body had also been so well preserved over the centuries that researchers were able to draw conclusions about the person's gender, lifestyle, diet, and even illnesses. The dead like it colorful. Once again, scientists had to overturn everything they thought they knew about Egypt when these unusually colorful tombs were found in the Saqqara necropolis. These tombs, which are more than 2,500 years old and date back to Egypt's 26th dynasty, are so different from any other typical Egyptian tombs that they caused amazement among researchers. The vibrant colors and detailed decorations may have been a fashion of some kind, or they may have belonged to a particular ethnic group. Eighty colorful coffins were found, still containing mummies. The grave goods and inscriptions point to priests and this could be an indication that the coffins belonged to a sect or a particular religious rite that liked it colorful. In addition to the coffins, 28 colored and gilded wooden statuettes of Ta Sokar, the god of the necropolis, and a bronze statuette of Nefertum, a sun god on the lotus, were found. The finds are considered unique in Egypt. A dead child with 142 dogs. What would you think if you found the bones of a child surrounded by 142 dogs in Egypt? This curiosity of Egyptian funerary art came to light in the village of Fayum. It is considered one of the most enigmatic and unusual archaeological finds in recent history. Scientists from the Russian Academy of Sciences have studied this find intensively and have come up with some interesting theories. The circumstances of this burial are particularly remarkable, as the child was apparently buried with a linen bag over its head. This practice was previously completely unknown in Egyptian archaeology. The researchers therefore suspect that the child may have belonged to a different culture. Interestingly, blue clay was found on the dog's bones, which may indicate that the animals may have been killed by a flood. The dogs showed no signs of violent death. It is possible that the dogs and the child were victims of a sudden flood and the child may have been quickly killed in unusual conditions and surrounded by many dogs. Dogs in Egypt were mainly kept as hunting companions, guard dogs, and pets. Although they were not officially sacred like cats, they were often treated lovingly and even mummified after their death. Were the falcons beheaded and cooked? Who would have thought that so many unique finds are still being made in this country? Archaeologists have been digging in the desert sands for almost 200 years and new things keep coming to light for which there is no explanation. Recently, researchers found the remains of more than a dozen falcons and all of them were missing their heads. This bizarre find was discovered in an ancient Egyptian sanctuary in Berniki in the Red Sea. The remains were found together with eggshells next to a stylized sculpture. The building could have been a temple dedicated to Horus, the falcon god. Despite the widespread spread of the Horus cult in ancient Egypt, this particular falcon shrine is so far completely unique. A Greek inscription in the shrine reads, It is inappropriate to boil a head here, which sounds truly strange and, given the decapitated falcons, is strange too. Professor Olaf Kaper of Leiden University suspects that the falcons were cooked. Nowhere else has evidence of this kind of falcon worship been found. It is also astonishing that the relics date from the 3rd to 4th century AD. At this time, Christianity had already spread in Egypt, but the falcon cult associated with Horus was apparently still practiced in the desert. Why the heads of the falcons were missing is a mystery, as is why the only complete falcon skeleton was covered with a vessel. The Nefertiti Statue The discovery of the Nefertiti statue was a significant event in Egyptology. The statue was discovered by the German archaeologist Ludwig Borchardt during excavations in Amarna, Egypt in 1912. Amarna was the central city of Egypt during Pharaoh Akhenaten's reign and his queen, Nefertiti. The bust, which depicts Nefertiti in high relief, was discovered in the workshop of the chief sculptor Thutmus and is believed to be a masterful example of the Amarna period's style of art. The statue is made of limestone and stucco, painted in a naturalistic style, and with detailed modeling of the face and headdress. The Nefertiti bust quickly became a sensation and was widely considered one of the greatest works of art to have ever been discovered. The statue is now housed in the 
the Neues Museum in Berlin, Germany, and is considered one of the most commendable works of ancient Egyptian art. Since its discovery, the bust has undergone several restorations. It has become the subject of much scholarly research, including debates over its authenticity. The Colorful Coffins the discovery of colorful coffins in Egypt is a recent archaeological find that has provided insights into the funerary practices of ancient Egyptians. These coffins, dating back to the 21st century, 1069 to 945 BC, were discovered in a tomb in the city of Luxor and are believed to have belonged to high-ranking officials and elite members. The coffins are decorated with intricate scenes depicting the deceased journey to the afterlife and are painted in vibrant colors, including blue, yellow, green, and red. The discovery of these coffins has provided excellent information about the beliefs and customs of ancient Egyptians regarding death and the afterlife. The Golden Mummies The discovery of golden mummies in Egypt refers to a recent archaeological find in the city of Minya, where a team of Egyptian archaeologists discovered several mummies wrapped in gold leaf and adorned with precious jewelry. The mummies, which date back to the Greco-Roman period, 332 BC to AD 642, were found in a tomb in the Tuna al Gabal necropolis. The discovery of these mummies is significant as it is rare to find mummies that have been covered in gold leaf, and it is believed that the mummies belong to high-ranking officials or members of the elite. The golden mummies also provided valuable information about the funerary practices and religious beliefs of the Greco-Roman period in Egypt. The find is also significant as it is proof of the great wealth of the people of the time in Egypt. The Oldest Pyramid The oldest pyramid in Egypt refers to the recent discovery of the Pyramid of the Moon in the ancient city of Edfu, which is believed to be the oldest known pyramid in Egypt. The pyramid dates back to around 2900 BC. Experts believe it's been built during the reign of the Pharaoh Huni, the last pharaoh of the Third Dynasty. The pyramid, which is smaller and well less known than the famous pyramids of Giza, is made of mud brick and limestone and is thought to have been originally about 60 feet 18 meters tall. The pyramid was discovered by a team of German archaeologists led by Dr. Franz Joseph Waldring from the University of Tübingen in 2019. The finding is significant as it predates the Great Pyramid of Giza by hundreds of years, and it is the oldest pyramid ever discovered. The pyramid is likely to have been a prototype for the later, more giant pyramids built in Egypt. The 100 Forgotten Coffins The discovery of 100 forgotten coffins in Egypt refers to a recent archaeological find in Luxor. Egyptian archaeologists discovered a large cache of coffins dating back to the 21st century, 1069 to 945 BC. The coffins in a tomb and the Asif Cemetery were stacked on one another in a remarkable state of preservation. The coffins are decorated with intricate scenes depicting the deceased's journey to the afterlife. The discovery of these coffins has provided valuable information about the beliefs and customs of ancient Egyptians regarding death and the afterlife. The find is significant as it is one of the largest caches of coffins ever found, and it is believed that the coffins belong to members of the elite. Caper the term caper refers to a specific type of ancient Egyptian tomb characterized by an underground chamber accessed by a shaft. The word caper comes from the old Egyptian word for hill or mound, which refers to the shape of the tomb's entrance. The discovery of caper tombs in Egypt is relatively recent compared to other ancient Egyptian tombs. French archaeologist Jean-Philippe Lauer first identified these tombs in the 1930s. Lauer was working at the Saqqara Necropolis, located near Cairo, and he discovered several graves that were constructed in this manner. The Kapur tombs are located beneath the mastaba of the tomb owners. They are known for their elaborate decoration, with well-preserved scenes depicting the tomb owner and his family and religious texts and the scenes from daily life. These tombs date back to Egypt's Old Kingdom, specifically the 5th and 6th dynasties. Some of the most famous Kapur tombs include the Tomb of Mararaka and T. The Book of the Dead The Book of the Dead is an old Egyptian collection of mortuary texts consisting of spells or magic formulas meant to protect and aid the deceased in the afterlife. It was likely compiled and edited during the 16th century BCE and included coffin texts dating from around 2000 BCE pyramid texts dating from around 2400 BCE, and other writings. Later versions include hymns to the sun god Ra. 
The texts were written by multiple authors and compilers and copied onto papyrus rolls, often decorated with illustrations, and sold to individuals for burial use. Many copies have been found in Egyptian tombs, but none contains all of the roughly 200 known chapters. The collection, originally titled The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day, was named the Book of the Dead by Carl Richard Lipesis, the German Egyptologist who published the first collection of the texts in 1842. Before we proceed, remember to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Also, like and comment on stuff you'd like us to cover in our subsequent videos. Now, let's go on. The Lost City in 2021, a team of archaeologists made a groundbreaking discovery in the desert region of Luxor, Egypt, the lost city of Luxor. The city, believed to have been a significant trading hub during the New Kingdom period, around 1500 BC, was discovered using cutting-edge technology such as aerial imagery and ground-penetrating radar. The well-preserved city featured several buildings, streets, and temples still standing, providing a glimpse into the past. The team also uncovered many artifacts and inscriptions, including pottery, jewelry, and figurines. These artifacts offered valuable insights into the everyday lives of the ancient inhabitants and their religion and culture. The lost city of Luxor's discovery was a significant achievement in archaeology and expanded our understanding of the ancient Egyptian civilization. It is also a testament to the skill and dedication of the archaeologists who conducted the research and their commitment to uncovering the secrets of the past. The Tomb of Tutankhamun the tomb of Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut, was one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. The tomb was found in 1922 by Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon, and it contained the wealth of treasures and artifacts that provided insight into the life and times of the young pharaoh. The tomb was filled with various artifacts, including a solid gold mask, statues, jewelry, and furniture. Many of these items were made of precious materials such as gold, silver, and lapis lazuli, and was intricately decorated with carvings, hieroglyphs, and precious inlaid stones. One of the tomb's most significant finds was Tutankhamun's solid gold mask, which covered the face of the mummy and was adorned with intricate carvings, inlaid glass, and precious stones. The mask is a masterpiece of ancient Egyptian art and is considered one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of all time. The tomb also contained several coffins, including the innermost coffin made of solid gold, which held the mummy of the pharaoh. The mummy was found to be in excellent condition, and it provided valuable information about the life and death of Tutankhamun. The Great Sphinx of Giza The Sphinx of Giza is one of ancient Egypt's iconic and recognizable landmarks. The statue is located on the Giza Plateau, near the pyramids of Khafre and Khufu and it is considered one of the most giant and impressive statues from ancient times. The Great Sphinx is a massive statue that stands over 20 meters 66 feet tall and is 73 meters 240 feet long. The figure has a lion's body and a human's head, which is believed to represent the pharaoh Khafre who built the second pyramid at Giza. The statue is carved out of limestone, estimated to be around 4,500 years old. The Sphinx's face is thought to depict the Pharaoh Khafre, who is believed to have commissioned the statue. The statue has undergone several restorations throughout history. The most recent one was in the 1920s by the Egyptian Antiquities Service. The Great Sphinx has played a significant role in Egyptian history, culture, and mythology. According to ancient Egyptian beliefs, the Sphinx symbolized the pharaoh's power and strength. It was also believed to have protective powers and to guard the pharaoh's tomb. The Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone is an ancient Egyptian artifact that played a vital role in the decoding of hieroglyphs, the writing system of ancient Egypt. The stone is a fragment of an enormous steel, or inscribed stone, discovered in 1799 by French soldiers who built fortifications in the Egyptian town of Rosetta, Rashid. The stone is made of grandiorite, a type of igneous rock, and it is approximately 114 centimeters, 44 inches high, 72 centimeters, 28 inches wide, and 28 centimeters, 11 inches thick. The stone is inscribed with a decree issued by King Ptolemy V in 196 BC, which is written in three languages, hieroglyphic, demotic, and Greek. The significance of the Rosetta Stone lies in the inscription being written in three scripts, which helped scholars decipher the hieroglyphs, which were previously thought to be a form of symbolic writing rather than a script. The text on the stone provided the key to understanding the hieroglyphs, as if it was a known language. Its translation helped scholars identify the names and titles of the pharaohs, gods, and other figures in the hieroglyphs. The Tomb of Merneptah 
The tomb of Merneptah, also known as Merneptah or Merneptah Sippa, is an important archaeological discovery in Egypt. Merneptah was Ramses II's 13th son and the fourth pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of Egypt. He reigned for about 10 years between 1213 and 1203 BC. The tomb of Merneptah was discovered in the Valley of the Kings, near Luxor, in 1898 by Edward R. Ayrton and Theodore M. Davis. The tomb is located in the area known as KV-8, one of the largest tombs in the Valley of the Kings. Inside the tomb, numerous inscriptions and carvings were found. One of the most significant inscriptions is the Israel Steel or Merneptah Steel, which contains the earliest known reference to the Israelites in ancient Egyptian texts. The inscription is a victory inscription of Merneptah, which mentions the defeat of a group called Israel. The inscription is considered the first evidence of the Israelites as an ethnic group and has been dated to around 1207 BC. The tomb also contained many other inscriptions and carvings, including scenes of the pharaoh smiting his enemies and offering to various gods and goddesses. The Tomb of Userkaf The Tomb of Userkaf is the first pyramid to be built in Saqqara, Egypt. It was constructed during the 5th dynasty of the Old Kingdom, around 2450 BCE. The pyramid was discovered in the early 20th century by French archaeologist Gustave Hikur. It originally stood 62 feet tall and was built for the pharaoh Yusukov, founder of the 5th dynasty. The pyramid complex also includes a mortuary temple, a valley temple, and a causeway. The pyramid's substructure, consisting of underground galleries, was also discovered. The pyramid was built of limestone, and now only the substructure remains, as it is mostly ruined. The Tomb of Cleopatra in 2010, archaeologist Kathleen Martinez made a shocking discovery when she uncovered the tomb of Cleopatra and Mark Antony in Egypt. This discovery provided new information about the last pharaohs of Egypt, who were known for their powerful reign and tragic end. Cleopatra was Egypt's last pharaoh and was known for her intelligence, beauty, and political acumen. She was the lover of Julius Caesar and later Mark Antony, with whom she had three children. Together, Cleopatra and Mark Antony ruled Egypt and were considered one of the most powerful couples of the time. However, their reign ended when they were defeated by Octavian and committed suicide. The tomb discovered by Martinez contained a wealth of artifacts including jewelry, pottery and sculptures. These artifacts provided insights into the lives of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, including their daily routines, religious beliefs, and status as rulers of Egypt. Additionally, the tomb contained evidence that Cleopatra and Mark Antony were buried together, which confirmed historical accounts of their deaths and burials. The Ship to Afterlife the discovery of the solar ship of Khufu, also known as the Khufu ship, was a significant archaeological find that shed light on the religious and funerary beliefs of the ancient Egyptians. The vessel was discovered in a pit next to the Great Pyramid of Giza by archaeologist Kamal el Malaka in 1954. The boat was incredibly well preserved, with its cedar planks and ropes remaining intact after over 4,500 years. Archaeologists believe the boat was built for the pharaoh Khufu, who reigned in the 26th century BCE and is known for constructing the Great Pyramid. It is thought that the ship was used for religious ceremonies and possibly for the pharaoh's journey into the afterlife. The boat is 143 feet long and was constructed using cedar wood imported from Lebanon. The Khufu ship was not the only boat buried near the pyramid, but it is the largest and most well-preserved of the funerary boats discovered. The ship was dismantled and removed from the pit in which it was buried. However, it was reassembled and is now displayed at the Khufu Boat Museum near the Great Pyramid. The discovery of the boat and its subsequent restoration and show has provided valuable insights into the religious and funerary practices of the ancient Egyptians. Experts consider it one of the most significant archaeological finds of the 20th century. The Intramedullary Nail the intramedullary nail, sometimes referred to as an IM nail, an integrating nail, or a Kushner's nail, is a steel rod that has been put into the medullary cavity of a bone. IM nails have been used to treat fractured long bones in the brain. The soldiers were able to return to their duty sooner, often within a few weeks, because the IM nails share the weight with the bones rather than entirely holding the bone. The largest intramedullary nail was found in the left knee of an Egyptian person who lived more than 3,500 years ago and was known as the user Montu. According to Gerhard Kushner, the first use of this device was to heal personnel who had sustained wounds during World War II. Before it, the main treatments for these wounds were force or plaster, both of which required protracted periods of immobility. The Incomplete Obelisk Hatshepsut placed an order for the incomplete obelisk in Aswan between 1508 and 1458 BC. 
probably as a companion to what would eventually be renowned as the Lateran Obelisk, which was originally at Karnak and was later brought to the Lateran Palace in Rome. The incomplete obelisk is over a third bigger than any obelisk from ancient Egypt that has ever been built. If completed, it would have been around 41.75 meters 137 feet, in height and nearly 1,090 tons. 1,200 short tons in weight, which is roughly equivalent to 200 African elephants. The effort to physically carve the obelisk out of bedrock was abandoned when fissures formed in the granite. The obelisk's bottom side is still attached to the bedrock. With tool traces and okra-colored lines indicating where the artisans were working, the incomplete obelisk provides remarkable glimpses into ancient Egyptian stoneworking processes. The Royal Cache an Egyptian tomb called the Secret Mummy Cave, also called the Royal Cache or T320 and originally DB320, is located in the Theban necropolis close to the al and across from the modern city of Luxor. It houses imperial mummies from the 21st Empire, housing an unequaled collection of the mummified remains and funeral decorations of more than 50 kings, queens, and other members of the royal household. The 11 rulers found there include two of the 10 emperors from the 20th dynasty, five of the 15 emperors from the 18th dynasty, three of the eight emperors from the 19th dynasty, and one of the nine emperors from the 17th dynasty. The chief priest of Amun Punjab, his wife, as well as other close relatives were also buried in the tomb. Sarcophagus Archaeologist Ola Il Yuzi, emeritus professor of the Faculty of Archaeology at Cairo University, has praised the discovery of a magnificent Egyptian sarcophagus at Saqqara, near Cairo in Egypt. After being buried for thousands of years in sand and its underground burial chamber, the regime at the time was discovered. Inscriptions praising Tavania, who managed King Ramses II's treasury and was the greatest pharaoh of ancient Egypt, are carved onto the stone sarcophagus. The hieroglyphic titles of Tanivia shown that he had a close relationship with the monarch and made a considerable contribution. The sarcophagus is decorated with images of deities, including the sky goddess Nut, who was drawn on the top of the tomb where the wings open, protecting the body of the deceased. Lifelike Portrait of a Mummy Archaeologists located Fayum mummy paintings at an ancient Egyptian location for the first time in 50 years. Archaeologists discovered two complete mummy portraits, as well as semi-complete and incomplete portraits while conducting excavations at the necropolis of the ancient site. Because they could afford to give their family such expensive portraits that are exact replicas of the deceased, the persons who were buried in such a setting in Philadelphia were undoubtedly upper middle class or elite. Artists who were most likely from Alexandria, an Egyptian city on the Mediterranean coast, painted the portraits. Along with the mummy portraits, archaeologists also discovered a statue of the Egyptian Greek goddess of love, Isis Aphrodite, and the ruins of a structure where mummies were buried. They also discovered the ruins of papyri with Greek and demonic texts, an Egyptian cursive script. The papyri contained details on the social, economic, and religious situations of the locals. The Tomb of Nefertiti Neferunrafetwan Nefertiti has been shielded from the prying eyes of Egyptology for 3,300 years. According to an Egyptian archaeologist, the mummy of Queen Nefertiti has been found. One of the oldest world's most puzzling mysteries will have an explanation if the claim is proven to be true. Let's investigate the absolute truth with the aid of a hidden realm. Let's begin the revelation. First, the 18th century dynasty in the 1300s BC, Nefertiti served as the monarch of ancient Egypt. The finding of concealed hieroglyphics in Tutankhamun's tomb supports the idea that the legendary Egyptian queen Nefertiti is interred nearby in a secret room. The finding of concealed hieroglyphics in Tutankhamun's tomb supports the idea that the legendary Egyptian queen Nefertiti is interred nearby in a secret room. Archaeologists have been claiming to have discovered Nefertiti's tomb for the past seven years. There were multiple instances of identity confusion. There was no confirmation, evidently until recently. The Rosetta Stone The Rosetta Stone is a piece of granitoid stone with an engraved order that was presented in 196 BC by a council of Egyptian priests opposing the goodness and piety of Egypt's ruler Ptolemy V. The three writing styles employed to compose the directives are hieroglyphics, a script predominantly used by the clergyman, demotic, a somewhat straightforward language used for common writing, and ancient Greek. The Rosetta Stone, discovered in 1799 by French army engineers building a fort close to Rashid during Napoleon Bonaparte's conquest of Egypt, finally let scholars interpret text 2,000 years after its conception in the late 19th century. 
The Rosetta Stone was obtained by the British shortly after they defeated the French in Egypt in 1801. Thomas Young, a British scientist, made some early progress in decoding his ancient writing when he began reading the phrases on the Rosetta Stone in 1814. Khufu's Ship Ancient Egyptian full-size solar bark known as the Khufu ship is still of satisfactory quality. Around 2500 BC, during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom period of ancient Egypt, it was placed in a pit at the base of the Great Pyramid of the Pharaoh Khufu. It appeared to have been a component of the comprehensive burial goods intended for use in the afterlife, together with other ancient Egyptian ships that were also buried. One of the oldest, biggest, and best preserved ancient ships is the Khufu ship, the world's oldest intact ship, measuring 43.4 meters, 142 feet long, and 5.9 meters, 19 feet wide, has been dubbed a marvel of woodcraft and could still sail if placed in a lake or river. Structures of Abu Simbel the historic landmark Abu Simbel, which consists of two massive rock-cut temples, is located in the hamlet of Abu Simbel in the Aswan district of Upper Egypt, not far from the Sudanese border. It is situated 300 kilometers, 190 miles by car southwest of Aswan on the western bank of Lake Nasser. The monument is part of the Nubian Constructions, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that encompasses Amara Wadi Asufaria, in addition to other Nubian structures and stretches from Abu Simbo to fillet next to Aswan. The two buildings were first cut out of the hillside when Ramses II was ruler of the 19th Kingdom of the 13th century BC. They serve as a lasting tribute to Ramses II. His wife, Nefertiti, and his children are depicted in carvings beside his legs. They weren't given a comparable position of importance either. This reminds him of his victory at the Battle of Kadesh. Their massive exterior rock carvings have also become well known. Teenage Mummy Not very long ago, a teenage mummy was discovered alongside a large cache of elaborate jewelry. According to Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, a teenage girl's mummy was found with an extensive collection of jewelry buried with her. The mummy is from the 17th dynasty of Egypt, which ruled from 1580 to 1550 BC. She was shockingly only 15 or 16 years old when she passed away. The team found the adolescent lying on her right side inside a sycamore tree trunk coffin that had been painted. She had two spiral earrings on when she was laid to rest. Copper leaf, a blue glass ring, a bone ring, and several necklaces joined by a ceramic chip with a glaze. Who was she and why did she die? Was she royalty? The Tomb of King Tut's Wife Archaeologists finally discovered King Tut's wife in a tomb that was made close to King Ai's tomb, who married King Tut's widow. A blue painted basis, knives with wooden handles, and the head of a cow were all discovered in four foundation deposits. They were all arranged in a rectangle. Radar imaging of the West Valley site revealed an intriguing void that might have been two entrances close to the deposits. Valley of Mummies in the western desert of Egypt, there is a large Greco-Roman tomb close to the Bahrainian oasis. After being discovered in 1996 by Zahi Hawass and his Egyptian colleagues, some 250 mummies that were approximately 2,000 years old were recovered over several seasons. In the end, the excavators concluded that there were significantly more than 10,000 mothers. There were four different types of mummies at Bahariah. The first pattern, which was found on roughly 60 mothers, has a gold face mask and a gown adorned with chest-length images of numerous goddesses and deities. Anubis, the lord of cremation, and his four children are portrayed in the second design, which is coated in cartilage. The third form, which was not embellished with gold or bloodshed, was interred in an anthropoid-shaped pottery casket. The final pattern was covered in linen. The Sun Temples Ancient Egyptians built temples to the sun god Ra, known as Egyptian sun temples. The phrase now mostly refers to the temples constructed during the Old Kingdom era by six or seven pharaohs of the Fifth Dynasty. However, a thousand years later, during the New Kingdom, when Akhenaten constructed the Karnak Temple of Thebes, sun temples would resurface. In a lower layer that predates the temple, archaeologists found signs of a mud brick building there, as well as quartz blocks that might be the remains of one of the four destroyed temples. There may have been six temples built, but only two have been discovered. 
The design of sun temples suggested that they had purposes other than just royal burials. The first few monarchs of the 5th dynasty were triplets as well as the legitimate descendants of the sun deity Ra, according to the Middle Kingdom era legend called Tale of Dijadi and the Magicians. This myth appears to have some truth because the second and third kings of the 5th dynasty were not only related, but they also began an especially fervent devotion to Ra that persisted throughout the 5th and 6th dynasties. It is assumed that there are at least six separate temples because there are six to seven various names on sun temples documented in primary records from this era. The term sun temple doesn't exist in ancient Egypt though. In ancient Egypt, the temples were a major hub of wealth and significance. The Plague of Cyprian at present-day Luxor, a group of archaeologists has been uncovering the remains of several deceased bodies for the past 15 years. Scientists confirm that the remains are from the 3rd century AD after further study. The human bones that the archaeologists found at the site date to a time when a pandemic swept the globe, were shielded from light back in the day by a thick layer. The ancient Egyptians cremated the dead as a cleansing ritual to stop the calamity from spreading. Additional examination revealed that the deceased passed away so quickly that they were not even given the chance for a decent funeral. The Screaming Mummy How did the Screaming Mummy die? And who was he? This horrible mystery persisted for countless years until modern CT scans and DNA analysis revealed that the Screaming Mummy is the body of Prince Pentaware, the son of King Ramses III. He had no choice but to end his life. The incident is referred to as the Harem Conspiracy and had King Ramsay III being hanged as retribution for his part in killing his father. The homicidal son received further punishment for not mummifying and covering his body in sheepskin, which rendered him unclean and doomed to damnation in the afterlife. The other mummies, however, had been meticulously mummified and were wrapped in white linen. Mummified Babies Found in Tutankhamun's Tomb the discovery of two fetuses' remains in King Tut's tomb in ancient Egypt stunned the world of Egyptology. But according to a recent study, they very well may have been twins and his children. The king probably fathered the two fetuses, which were most likely twins. The cause of their demise is still a mystery. Tomb KV-5 the small study tomb, known as Tomb KV-5, was the largest building ever built in the Valley of the Kings, according to KV-5 excavations. Archaeologists have discovered 121 passageways and chambers in the tomb, according to the most recent reports of their ongoing excavations. The researchers predicted that eventually more than 150 will be discovered. In KV-5, at least six royal sons are presumed to be interred. Saqqara Tombs Five ancient tombs of the most recent additions to the vast necropolis of Saqqara, south of Cairo. They were found in the vicinity of Miranda's 52.5 meter tall pyramid, which was built during the 6th dynasty. The grave's vivid carvings reveal the identities of the top authorities of the era. The tombs are scheduled to be built during the Old Kingdom period between 2700 and 2200 BC and the First Intermediate period between 2181 and 2055 BC. A deep grave pit makes up the tube, which opens into a room painted with funerary images of the sacrificial tables, the seven oils, and the palace facade. The tomb also contained a limestone sarcophagus. The first tomb buries an official. The second tomb is home to a female, who may be Yaritz V. Pepe Nefani, who served the palace as its purifier, was buried in the third tomb. The fourth is a burial shaft that is six meters deep and belongs to a woman by the name of Peti. She was the priestess of Hathor, the goddess of love and procreation. The fifth was set aside for a man called Hanu, superintendent and overseer of the royal houses. It consists of a rectangular burial shaft that is seven meters deep. The Elder Cheese when archaeologists in Saqqara, Egypt discovered another ancient kind of the world's oldest cheese, it was both surprising. The 3,300-year-old powdery white substance was found in the tomb of a pharaoh's servant, and protein analysis revealed that it was most likely a cheese produced from a combination of cow, goat, and possibly sheep milk. The cheese may be cursed with live bacteria that may make anyone who tried it sick. Don't worry, I saved the best for last. Hold your seats for this one, this will shock you. Ark of the Covenant The most sacred items from the Bible have been lost for years, and people have searched in vain to find them. The renowned Ark of the Covenant is one of these sacred items that are in high demand. The Enigma attracted seekers from all around the world, including Egypt. The elaborate gilded casket, which is considered to have been constructed by the Israelites some 3,000 years ago, is this fabled treasure. 
they held the stone tablets that contained the Ten Commandments. Religious archaeologists in Israel assert that they have discovered the stone on which the Ark of the Covenants once rested. It was carried using poles placed across rings and on its sides. Scientists from Tel Aviv University made the biblical claim after discovering a 3,100-year-old temple not quite in Egypt, but rather close by, in the current town of Beit Shemash. The Khufu Ship the Khufu ship, located at the Giza Pyramid Complex, is an ancient Egyptian full-size solar tall ship known as the Khufu ship that is still intact. Approximately 2500 BC, during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom era of ancient Egypt, it was placed in a hole at the base of the Great Pyramid of the Faru Khufu. It appears to have been a component of the comprehensive burial grounds intended for use during the afterlife, together with other ancient Egyptian vessels that were also preserved. One of the earliest, biggest, and greatest ancient ships is the Khufu ship, the world's oldest complete ship measuring 43.4 meters, 142 feet long, and 5.9 meters, 19 feet wide, has been dubbed a marvel of fine woodworking, and could still sail if placed in a lake or river. Uncertainty surrounds the ship's past and purpose. It belongs to the type of solar boat that the ancient Egyptians thought would ferry the reborn king from across the heavens alongside the sun deity Ra. The ship does, even so, show some evidence of having been in the water, and it's conceivable that it either was a burial barge that was used to transport the king's embalmed corpse from Memphis to Giza, or even that Khufu himself utilized it as a pilgrimage ship to travel to holy sites before it was entombed for him to use in the afterlife. In contrast to the ship burials in Northern Europe, it was empty. The Unfinished Obelisk the unfinished obelisk was found at Aswan, Hatshepsut, 1508 to 1458 BC, placed a directive for its construction, maybe to complement the Lateran obelisk, which was originally at Karnak and was later brought to the Lateran Palace in Rome. The incomplete obelisk is over a third bigger than any obelisk from ancient Egypt that has ever been built. If completed, it would have reached approximately 41.75 meters, 137 feet, in height and nearly 1,090 tons. 1,200 short tons in weight, which is roughly equivalent to 200 African elephants. The effort to physically chisel the obelisk out of the base was stopped when fissures formed in the granite. The obelisk's bottom base is still fastened to the bedrock, featuring tool traces and okra-colored markings indicating where the artisans were crafting the incomplete obelisk provides remarkable glimpses into ancient Egypt's stoneworking processes. Along with the incomplete obelisk, an incomplete, partially worked obelisk platform was also uncovered in 2005 at Aswan quarries. The location of the majority of the renowned obelisks may correlate to certain rock engravings and other relics that were found. The incomplete items and all the Aswan quarry together form an outdoor exhibition that is formally classified as an archaeological site by the Egyptian government. The Great Pyramid the Great Pyramid of Giza is the biggest pyramid in Egypt which houses Khufu's tomb from the 4th dynasty. The pyramid, the earliest of the seven wonders of the ancient universe, was constructed in the initial 26th century BC over a duration of about 27 years. It is the only one to have survived largely completely. It surrounds the current Giza in Greater Cairo, Egypt, and is part of the Giza Pyramid Complex. An estimated 2.3 million big pieces totaling 6 million metric tons were quarried to build the Great Pyramid. Most rocks have uneven sizes and shapes and have relatively minimal dressing. Concrete joined the outer layers collectively. Local marble from the Giza Plateau was mainly utilized. Other building materials were transported down the Nile by barge, including stone slabs from Aswan that might weigh up to 80 tons and white marble from Turu for the framing. The Great Pyramid has three recognized rooms. The pyramid's base had been cut further into the foundation, but the lowest rate was left incomplete. Higher up in the pyramidal construction is the so-called Queen's Chamber and King's Chamber, each of which houses a granite tomb. Some people think that Hemerinu, also known as Hemon, Khufu's vizier, was responsible for designing the Great Pyramid. Many different scientific and non-science theories make an effort to describe precise building techniques. The Greater Temple of Abu Simbel Close to the Sudanese border in the hamlet of Abu Sibel, 
Aswan province, Upper Egypt, there is a historic site known as Abu Simbel that consists of two enormous rock-cut temples. It is located on the western shore of Lake Nasser, 300 kilometers, 190 miles, via car, southwest of Aswan. The structure is a component of the Nubian Structures, a UNESCO World Heritage Site which extends from Abu Simbel to Philae, next to Aswan, and includes Amada, Wadi Asubia, as well as other Nubian structures. When Ramses II was emperor of the 19th kingdom throughout the 13th century BC, the two structures were first hewn from the hillside. They act as an enduring memorial to Ramses II. By his legs, his wife Nefertari and kids can be seen in scaled-down representations. They also weren't granted a similar position of prominence. This serves as a reminder of his triumph at the fight of Kadesh. Their enormous exterior rock-carving images have gained notoriety. A Valley of Mummies There is a significant Greco-Roman tomb near the Biharian oasis in Egypt's western desert. Over the course of a few seasons, some 250 mummies that were roughly 2,000 years old were collected after being found in 1996 by Zahi Hawass and his Egyptian colleagues. The excavators ultimately calculated a figure of much more than 10,000 mummies. When Hawass and his colleagues found the mummies, several of them were nevertheless in good shape. They have a variety of decorations. The mummies at Baharia came in four main categories. The very first design, which had been discovered on about 60 mummies, features a gold face mask and a garment with chest-length representations of various goddesses and gods. The second design is coated in cartonage and features images of gods, including the Lord of Cremation, Anubis, and his four offspring. Spring. The third style was buried in an anthropoid, a ceramic coffin, rather than being adorned with gold or cartonage. The final design had a linen covering. The Secret Mummy Cave the Secret Mummy Cave, which is also known as the Royal Cache, also recognized as TT320, formerly DB320, is an Egyptian tomb situated in the Theban necropolis near Deir al bari and across from the contemporary city of Luxor. It serves as a storehouse for imperial mummies during the 21st Empire, and as a result, it has an unparalleled assortment of mummified remains and burial furnishings of much more than 50 rulers, queens, as well as other royal household individuals from the new empire. One of the nine emperors from the 17th dynasty, five of the 15 emperors from the 18th dynasty, three of the eight emperors from the 19th empire, and two of the 10 emperors from the 20th dynasty are among the 11 emperors discovered there. Traditionally, the chief priest of Amun Pinjam II, his spouse Nesekahans, as well as other close relatives were buried in the tomb. It generated a stir when locals first discovered it in 1871 and Egyptologists in 1881. The mummies rapidly rose to the top of the new Egyptian gallery's attractions, then in Giza. The evening of Tallying the Years, one of Egypt's most well-known movies, depicted the finding in 1969. After the well-publicized Pharaoh's Golden Procession in 2021, the mummies were transferred to a contemporary display space in the new National Museum of Egyptian History. Intramedullary Rod A steel rod that has been inserted into the medullary cavity of a bone is termed as internal fixation rod, also known as an intramedullary nail, IM nail, an integrating nail, or a Kushner nail. Long bones of the brain that have been fractured have been treated with IM nails. The initial application of this gadget, treating servicemen with injuries, occurred throughout World War II, according to Gerhard Kushner. Before that, the only options for treating these injuries was force or plaster, both of which necessitated extended periods of immobility. Since IM nails share the burden with the bones instead of completely holding the bone, the troops were able to resume their activities sooner, but sometimes within a couple of weeks. The remnants of an Egyptian individual from far more than 3,500 years back, known as the Usermontu, included the longest intramedullary nail, which was discovered in the left knee. The device was likely put in after the guy passed away, but prior to his being buried, according to investigators. The Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone is a block of granitoid stone with an inscribed order objecting to the kindness and piety of Egypt's Emperor Ptolemy V, which was delivered in 196 BC by a committee of Egyptian priests, hieroglyphics, a script primarily used by clergy, demotic, a slightly straightforward script used for common writing, and ancient Greek are the three writing styles used to create the directive. 
The stone is a crucial tool in aiding scholars in their understanding of the lengthy language because after the 4th century, when hieroglyphics were no longer used, the writing system was a mystery to academics. 2,000 years after its invention, in the late 19th century, the Rosetta Stone finally assisted researchers in deciphering inscriptions. The stone slab was found in 1799 by French army engineers working on a fort near Rashid during Napoleon Bonaparte's Egyptian conquest, Rosetta. Before being transported to Rosetta and utilized in the building of Fort Julian, which was soon revealed by the French, the item was initially exhibited in a sanctuary, probably close to the historic city of Saez. Just after the British overcame the French in Egypt in 1801, they acquired the Rosetta Stone. Thomas Young, a British scientist who first started reading the words on the Rosetta Stone in 1814, achieved some early strides in deciphering its ancient writing. Young speculated that the phonetic pronunciations of royalty titles, especially Ptolemy, which had been mentioned in the Greek inscriptions, could be found in the interlocking rings, which are hieroglyphs wrapped in oval shapes. The Tomb of the Silver Pharaoh The tomb of Pharaoh Susanus I, who ruled the 21st dynasty from 1036 to 989 BCE, is unquestionably one of Egypt's greatest underappreciated archaeological finds. Ancient Egyptian rulers and emperors encircled themselves with valuables, most of which were made of gold. They thought that the presence of riches would guarantee that Pharaoh would get the gift of eternal life rather than doing it out of avarice. In ancient Egypt, silver represented the moon. The discovery of a silver tomb in the imperial tomb of Sustanus I was astounding because silver was much less prevalent than gold, even though the circumstances of the discovery could not have been worse. French scientist named Pierre Monet, 1885-1966, who carried out extensive investigations of the artifacts of the New Empire, 1567-525 BCE, at the old town of Tanis in the Nile Delta, discovered the tomb of Sustanus I and his wife, Mujinamet. Queen Hatshepsut's Mummy A recently unearthed tomb did not contain Queen Hatshepsut's mummy, an obese woman who was seen laying on the ground in someone else's tomb with one elbow crossed over her bosom in a manner appropriate for royalty, was discovered more than a century ago. It was thought that Hatshepsut's wet attendant was buried in the tomb. The mummy on the floor, however, was never named. She was virtually ignored in tomb KV-60 in the Valley of the Monarchs just on the west bank of Luxor for further than a century. Around a year ago, after Egyptian archaeological officials started studying six unknown female corpses, the search to determine Hatshepsut began in earnest. The search ultimately narrowed down to two mummies. Lost Temple of Akamim On the eastern bank of the Nile, across from the city of Sohag at Akamim, was where the historic village of Aipu formerly stood. Being the center of worship for the god Min, it was additionally identified as Kentmen during the ancient era. It is believed that Tai, Akhenaten's mum, owned considerable properties in the region, which prospered as Chemis, the headquarters of the ninth Upper Egyptian Nome, during the Ptolemaic period. The town was known as Panopolis to the Greeks and Chain to the ancient Coptic Christians. A few of Akhenaten's ancient structures still exist in their original state because many of them were destroyed to be utilized in later eras. On the northeastern outskirts, however, construction work in 1981 revealed a portion of a temple with a massive gate thought to belong to the Greco-Roman dynasty. Some many Ramesian II statue remnants were discovered during excavations, as well as a stunning gigantic monument to the crown prince and consort Meritarmon, which has since been constructed in the middle of the region, several meters underneath the present-day floor level, where it now stands as a portion of an open-air exhibition. Despite being damaged, as it was discovered laying face down in front of the temple entryway, the statue of Merimutton was a remarkable find, currently made of limestone. The reconstructed queen, who is 11 meters tall, is capped with a modius, head covering, that is embellished with serpents and the twin feathers of the god's wife of Amun. The exhibition also has numerous stone carvings and architectural components from the neighboring buildings as well as a lovely Roman figure of Venus, Isis. There are also some sizable engraved slabs from El Amman that were likely recycled in the construction of the later temple. The goddess Trifis, Ripiet, who served as Min's spouse at Akamen, and the Greco-Roman temple were both honored. The huge sanctuary, which was said to resemble the Temple of Edfu in design, was reportedly in fine condition till the 14th century, when it was disassembled and utilized as construction material. Herodotus described in his Histories the Temple of Min's exquisitely adorned masonry and two enormous sculptures. The Town of Tomb Builders 
The craftsmen who built on the monuments in the Canyon of the Kings from the 18th to 20th empires of the New Kingdom of Egypt lived in an ancient Egyptian workman's hamlet called the Del I Medina. A group led by Bernard Brie started excavating the site while the world's news was focused on Howard Carter's finding of the tomb of Tutankhamun in 1922. One of the best researched histories of communal living in the ancient world, covering approximately 400 years, is the product of this investigation. The organization, interpersonal relationships, working circumstances, and living conditions of a society cannot be researched in such detail at any other location similar. The location of the site is on the western bank of the Nile, next to present-day Luxor, the Canyon of the Royals to the north, burial sites towards the east and southeast, and the Canyon of the Queens towards the west all lie within a short distance of the settlement, which is set up in a tiny naturalistic amphitheater. Given the delicate nature of the tasks done in the tombs, it's possible that the settlement was constructed in a separate location from the general populace to maintain secrecy. Around the town, a sizable discovery of papyri was uncovered in the 1840s, and throughout the 19th century, several artifacts were also discovered. Between 1905 and 1909, Ernesto Schiaparelli conducted the first significant excavations at the excavation site, resulting in the discovery of several ostraca. From 1922 to 1951, a French team, under the direction of Bernard Bruyer, explored the whole site, including the settlement, waste, and graveyard. Sadly, due to a lack of oversight, it is now believed that nearly half of the papyri collected were taken without the group director's knowledge or consent. In a well near the settlement, about 5,000 ostraca of various works of trade and literature were discovered. Jaroslav Ern, a member of Bruyere's team, who studied the town for nearly 50 years before passing away in 1970, seemed to be able to identify and explain the daily lives of a number of the locals. Mont Cernabru was given a new name for the mountains that tower over the community in honor of the contributions Ern and Bruyere made to it. The Oxyrhynchus Papyri the Oxyrhynchus papyri are a collection of texts that papyriologist Bernard Pine Grenfeld and Arthur Surridge Hunt unearthed in the late 19th and early 20th century at an antiquated garage dump close to Oxyrhynchus in Egypt. The text from the Neolithic period and Roman eras of Egyptian history, which began in the 3rd century BC, 10% of them, it is thought, are intellectual in style. Codes, edicts, registers, official correspondence, census reports, tax evaluations, appeals, court filings, sales, leases, wills, invoices, accounts, inventories, astrology, and personal letters appear to make up the majority of the papyri discovered. Despite Greek being the language used for the majority of the papyri, writings in other languages, including Arabic, Latin, and Egyptian hieroglyphics, mainly Coptic, inscriptions and phonetic, were also discovered. Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, and Pahlavi texts make up a minor portion of the overall number of texts. A love spell found on this papyrus asks various gods to scorch the earth of a woman till she falls in love with the person who performed the spell. The about 1800-year-old papyri remnants were found by researchers Bernard Greenfeld and Arthur Hunt between the years of 1896 and 1907. The pieces were discovered by the researchers amid the remains of Oxyrhynchus, a significant historical settlement in southern Egypt that thrived while the Roman Empire ruled Egypt. Due to the town's arid environment, the papyri that the citizens lasted for almost two millennia. Since 1898, scholars have gathered and typed over 5,000 papers from what was once several boxes of huge cornflakes-sized papyrus fragments. This is expected to represent approximately 1-2% to of the papyri that still need to be preserved, translated, interpreted, and cataloged, which numbers at least 500,000. Volume 86, which was issued on November 30th, 2021, was the most current volume to be produced. There are currently Oxynoraris papyri stored in museums all around the universe. Many of these are kept in Oxford University's Sackler Library. The sort of elements of each papyrus or fragment is shortly described in the web table of contents. Pyramid Age Papyri these are Egypt's oldest papyrus fragments that describe the Great Pyramids of Giza's buildings and are now on exhibit to the audience in Cairo. Several written papyrus remnants, the longest ever recorded in Egypt, were found in a cave at the historic Red Seaport of Wadi El Jarf in 2013 by a joint team of French and Egyptian researchers. In a 2014 study published in the journal Near Eastern Antiquity, Egyptologists Pierre Tellet and Gregory Marad reported the historical writings they uncovered, which included a diary from the 27th year of the Pharaoh Khufu's reign that recorded the building of the Great Pyramid of Giza. 
The middle-ranking supervisor, Marir, who recorded the construction activities for the Great Pyramid, which had been nearly finished, and the activity at the limestone mines at Tura, on the contrary direction of the Nile River, in Egyptian characters, in the logbook more than approximately 4,500 years ago. The daily activities of the construction personnel are described in Mirror's logbook, which is authored in a two-column daily schedule. Mirror also records that the limestone slabs dug up at Torah and utilized to conceal the outer layer of the pyramid had been transferred by boat to the worksite along the Nile River and a network of tunnels, a trip that took two to three days. The Great Pyramid of Giza, which was finished between 2560 and 2540 BC, is the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world that remains intact. The greatest Egyptian pyramid, which stands over 450 feet tall and requires an average of 23 years to build, was the world's tallest building for about 4,000 years. The 2.3 million slabs needed to build it weighed an average of 7 tons each. Tomb KV-5 The Canyon of the Royals has an underground, rock-cut tomb known as Tomb KV-5. It belongs to Ramses II's son. Although KV-5 was partly dug as early as 1825, Kent R. Period and his excavation team revealed its complete extent in 1995. The biggest tomb in the Canyon of the Royals is now recognized. KV-5 was looted in prehistory while waiting outside the valley's gateway. Additionally, over time, it experienced the same destiny as other low-lying tombs, which were to be covered with debris carried down in thunderstorm-related flash floods that occurred across the valley. Once the investigation of the valley began on comparatively recent occasions, the tomb was investigated numerous times, first in 1825 by James Burton and then in 1902 by Howard Carter, founder of the tomb Tutankhamun, who used KV-5 only as a dumping area. They were unable to enter beyond the first couple of chambers, therefore they were unable to notice anything peculiar about the tomb. The tomb is significantly bigger than originally believed, according to further discoveries which have uncovered additional hallways and chambers that break off from the tomb's previously found areas. As of 2006, at least 130 rooms had been found, only approximately 7% had been emptied, and effort was still being done to open up the rest of the tomb. The majority of Ramses II offspring, male and female, especially some who passed away during his lifespan, were interred in this tomb, which was close to his own tomb, KV-7. Among many other things, pieces of Amun Herskal Kapefchifs were discovered and rebuilt.